Wow, Mo's sweating. <laughs> sweating! <laughs> Imagine sweating! <laughs> you guys see Mo? He's sweating! <laughs> Who cares? It's sweat. It's showtime! This is good for us. That was good. Worth. The reason it's worth is because this wave is going to be frozen. Take the cannon. Yeah. I don't want to play too aggressively. I'm fine with poking, but I'm not going to commit to a fight until my jungler or, or support show, or if their jungler or support shows on the map. Because you saw Silas, I just saw him at Dragon Pit. Sleep for dinner donated two dollars. Why is your bed made? You clapping cheeks today? Sad. You know why I didn't kill her? It's because she. Fuck. My air blade didn't go off. I always feel the need to re explain it for people that don't play Yasuo or don't know what I'm talking about. So, Yasuo has a mechanic. In case you're wondering why it always. Mo, why you eat before ult? Mo, why you eat before ult? Mo, what? Spin. Arr, when Yasuo throws a knockup, before. So, Yasuo can. I can Q and then I can ult, right? Actually, how about I go and practice tool? After this game, I'm gonna go and practice tool and I'm gonna teach you guys some Yasuo stuff. So, all you noobs can learn. No one cares. Homie, you're gonna care when you get an Owen Tiny Oslo in your next game trying to EQ and not being able to do it because he doesn't know what I was talking about. Literally freezing. He's free. It's 17 minutes. You don't have a tower and you're freezing on me. Eat that Q then. And that one. And that one. Yep, that's what you get for freezing. Oh no, buddy. Oh my god, I'm fuming. That's good. My wind wall actually blocks everything. Oh no! Oh, I missed! Oh, I whiffed. So sad. The thing is, Alistar just walks in in a straight line, which is so bad for us because that's not how we want to engage. We need Alistar to come off like a nice flank or something, or like off the side. No, no, no. I can't, man. I can't. Man, like, come on, what am I playing with? It's so crazy! Seed man, that all was pretty bad. She just ulted into five. That was really troll. Fuck. I think wasting my knockup was really bad there. There was definitely a play there. I think there was a million percent chance of play there. I think that was good. Honestly, I think I fucked up though. I accidentally EQ'd the wave instead of Eing only. I EQ'd. No, this is a play mid lane. This is a play mid lane. I'm gonna go on this wave. Dude, I'm so triggered. I was like slowed on the rumble ult. 
What a long ass game. Yeah, this game is lasting for quite a while. It's just because, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you damage charts after the game. And you're gonna see Kaisa's damage and be like, wait, why did she deal so little compared to Ezreal? I'm gonna not be able to find the answer for you, but I'll try. Nice! Let's fucking go, game. Nice! Nice. Good job. Alistar actually, first fight he did something. Good, but yeah, fucking won the game. Nice. 300 CS at 40 minutes. That's cool. Are you flaming my CS or are you saying it's actually good? I literally can't tell. Because my CS was trash, but the reason my CS was trash is because I didn't farm for like 10, 15 minutes straight. I was too fed that game to where I was full build while my enemy laner still had two items. So I oh, didn't yeah, farm I for a while and I didn't side lane to give my team as much farm as possible on my other teammates. Honestly, I'm surprised Kai'Sa's damage is close, but yeah, not surprised with my damage. All right, let me explain quick. Teach you guys a thing or two about Yasuo. Pinoy might put this in YouTube video, so I muted the audio. Okay, okay, shut up. Look at how much damage my Q ult does. Q, ult, 913, right? I'm gonna teach you guys what an air blade is. And an air, laid, an air blade is, when you have a tornado, you don't have to have a tornado actually. When someone's knocked up and you EQ and then you ult. I did 1500 damage instead of 900. That's just an air blade. I'm just explaining the air blade. Now let me teach you guys how Yasuo's ult works on the tower. Because this is something a lot of people don't understand. Look, say an enemy is right here. That's tower range, right? You want to know where my ult's going to put me? It should put me outside of it. Right here. Yasuo's ult tries to position you right outside of tower range. When people are sometimes, the reason my play earlier didn't work when I tried to one-shot, um, what's it called? Oriana is because she was standing in a position like this. And what happened was, I went to airblade her, but look at my airblade damage. Oh, airblade damage went through there. Let me try redoing it. I think my positioning isn't that good. It's gonna be hard because it's really random, but... Okay, look. Now, it still goes through, fuck. Oh no, it didn't go through. You see how my EQ damage didn't go through? I only did 956. Yeah, see how my Q damage isn't going through? It's because I'm not, I'm, I'm like, you see, it's only doing 986. It's not getting the full damage. Like, look at how much damage it did to that. That one did 986. Look how much I'm gonna do to this one. 1500 to 986. And the reason that happens is because I'm getting an air blade off on both of them. But when Yasuo, like, the, Yasuo doesn't want to go near turrets, is pretty much what it is. His ult tries to position you outside of turrets. So it positions me a little bit outside of her range because it pushes me out of tower to where my EQ damage doesn't go off on her. So that's why sometimes my air blades don't work under tower. It isn't because I fucked it up, but it's more so because that's just how it works. Now, I'll just give you guys a quick little listen on the other stuff. The air blade, like I said, it's knock up, EQR, simple. You can also do this if you want to get knock up. You can auto EQR like that. Reset again. Now, a bay blade is when you EQ flash. You can auto alt, and then you have the last one, which is a keyblade. Hope I don't fuck it up. Like that. 3,000 damage. That's how you do all, that's like all, pretty much all the awesome, party awesome mechanics. So for a bay, for an air blade, you just want to throw your tornado and wait. You want to wait until, like, look at the person you're knocking up. Just look at them. Look how much time you have left. He's still in the air. He's still in the air. Like, you have time. That's what I think about. I think about how long they're in the air for. Now with a Beyblade, you just EQ flash. You can do it as quick as possible, or you can do it slow like this. You can do it slow like this. But that's that's you being slow on your Q. When you hit Q, you pretty much need a flash, like, like that. You just need to hit Q and flash at the same time, pretty much. Like, you go and practice, still practice it yourself. And now for a Keyblade, the way I like to do it is I EQ, but at the last second before my Q goes off, then I flash. Because you want a Q, before you flash, it's not gonna work. Oh, it does work anyway. But you want to Q before you flash, so, but it has to be like a late one. Not like that. That was too late. You can do it in different ways too. The reason it works like that better is because your Q, Q goes on cooldown earlier and you have more time to actually get the EQ before ulting is what it is. When do you use Fleet Slash Conquer? All right, so I kind of recently have been like experimenting a lot, I'm not gonna lie, with like everything with Yasuo. Like, I've been experimenting a lot in general. I think, one, Fleet Footwork, a lot of the times better than Conquer. I think Conquer is, is so strong, but the problem about Conquer in the mid lane is 
90% of mid lane matchups are range. So if you think about it that way, in what type of situation do you really get to fully use your conquer in laning phase? You pretty much never are able to use it. Unless like the enemy's kind of trolling or like some games, sure, maybe, but like overall, most of the time, you're not actually able to get out your use your conquer in lane. You'll get out of lane and your conquer will deal like 90 damage or like 170 damage when your fleet could have healed you for 500 or 600 and gives you so much more lane sustain to do, deal so much more damage. So honestly, I think fleet, a lot of the times, if you can't proc conquer, that's what you should think in lane, like think in your head in champs like, am I gonna be able to proc conquer a lot this game? If not, go fleet for sustain. Or another way to think about it is, is the enemy team, or is the enemy laner, like who am I laning against? Am I, I'm laning against, let's say a Twisted Fate. Is TF, Twisted Fate gonna poke me enough to where I need fleet footwork? Or can I just greed laning phase, take conquer and stomp late game? Like, it, there's ways to think about it, but I think fleet is pretty good. <laughs> Oh,